Hello, everyone. This is Tom Fox. I'm the Compliance Evangelist, and I'd like to welcome you to One Month to Better Third-Party Management. This month's podcast series is sponsored by Opus. Opus helps free your business from the complexity and uncertainty of managing the risks associated with your customers, vendors, and third parties. By combining the most innovative third-party risk management and know your customer compliance SaaS platforms with unparalleled data solutions. Opus turns information into action so your business can thrive. Opus solutions include the Hyperos ABAC Accelerator, the leading platform for third-party risk management. To learn more, go to www.opus.com. Opus is an appropriate sponsor for this month as I'm focusing on third parties, the third-party risk management process. Over the next couple of weeks, I'll be looking at the management of third parties after the contract is signed. We're going to take a look at auditing, (coughs) relationship management, training, continually monitoring and up updating your own third-party program. This is an incredibly important month on my one-month series this year, and I'm sure that you will garner some new techniques that you can incorporate directly into your third-party risk management program. This is Tom Fox. Thank you very much for listening. Day 9. Department of Justice Metrics Around Third-Party Management. In a speech before the SIFMA Compliance and Legal Society New York Regional Seminar in November 2015. Then, Assistant Attorney General Leslie Caldwell laid out the metrics the Department of Justice would consider in evaluating a corporate compliance program around third parties. Caldwell began her remarks with the following question. Does the institution sensitize third parties like vendors, agents, or consultants to the company's expectation that its partners are also serious about compliance. So what can you do to satisfy these metrics around third-party management? Well, in this podcast, I'm going to detail several steps that you can take. The first one is recognizing that chief compliance officers and compliance practitioners understand the need for a business questionnaire, excuse me, business justification questionnaire, due diligence, and compliance terms and conditions. I was gratified to see the Department of Justice finally focusing on this final step in the life cycle of third-party management as a key metric for its new compliance council to evaluate. This is because the management of the third-party relationship that continues to be a source of trouble and heartburn for many companies. As Caldwell noted in her remarks, the management of a third-party relationship means more than including boiler cl- pay- boilerplate language in a contract. It means taking action, doing compliance, including the termination of a business relationship if the partner demonstrates a lack of respect for laws and policies. And that attitude towards partner compliance must exist regardless regardless of geographic location. While the 2012 FCPA guidance only provides that Companies should undertake some form of ongoing monitoring of third-party relationships. This means that you have an experienced compliance and audit team actively engaged in corporate, in the corporate office and in the business units to ensure that financial controls and compliance policies are followed and that remedial measures for violations or gaps are tracked, implemented, and rechecked as additional detection and prevention. Caldwell noted, it is more than simply... <clears throat> It is more than encompassing sensitization to anti-corruption compliance that is needed. Indeed, there are several ways for you to do so. The first one is a relationship manager for third parties. The starting point for the management of a third party is your relationship manager. The relationship manager should be a business unit employee who is responsible for monitoring, auditing, maintaining, and continuously evaluating the relationship between the company and the third party. The relationship manager can be the business sponsor who prepared the business justification, but it doesn't have to be. Those job duties could certainly be split. Some of the duties of the relationship manager may include being the main point of contact with a third party for all compliance issues, maintaining periodic contact with a third party, meeting annually with a third party to review its satisfaction of all company compliance obligations, submitting annual reports to the company's oversight committee, summarizing services provided by the third party, and assisting the company's oversight committee with any issues with respect to the third party. 
Next, the compliance professional. Just as a company needs a subject matter expert in anti-bribery compliance to be able to work with the business folks and answer the usual questions that come up in the day-to-day routine of doing business internationally, third parties also need such access. A third party may not be large enough to have its own compliance staff, so I advocate the company providing a dedicated resource to the third parties. I do not believe this will create a conflict of interest or that there will be a legal implement to impediment rather to providing such services. Uh, they can also include anti-corruption training for the third party, either on-site or through remote mechanisms. The compliance practitioner or compliance professional should work closely with the relationship manager to provide advice, training, and communications to the third parties. Next is an oversight committee. I advocate that a company should have a third-party oversight committee review all documents relating to the full panoply of a third-party relationship with the company. It can be a formal structure or some type of group, but the key is that to have senior management put a second set of eyes on any third party who might represent the company in the sales side of things. In addition to the basic concept of process validation of your management of third parties, as third parties are recognized as the highest risk under the FCPA, this is a manner to deliver additional risk management protection around that risk. After the commercial relationship has begun, the Oversight Committee should monitor the third party on no less than an annual basis. The annual audit should include a review of remedial due diligence investigations, the evaluation of any new supplemental risk associated with the negative information discovered from the third party or through financial audits. The Oversight Committee should review any reports of material breaches of contract, including breach of the requirements of your Code of Ethics and Compliance. In addition to the above remedial review, the Oversight Committee should review all payments requested by the third party to assure such payments are within company guidelines and are warranted by the contractual relationship with the third party. Lastly, the Oversight Committee should review any request to provide the third party any type of non-monetary compensation and, as appropriate, approve such requests. Next, audit. A key tool in managing the affiliation with a third party in the post-contract phase is auditing. Audit rights are, are a key clause in any compliance terms and conditions and must be secured. Your compliance audit should be systemic, independent, and documented process for obtaining evidence and evaluating it objectively to determine the extent to which your compliance terms and conditions are followed. The process can be described as following. Capture the data, analyze the data, and report on the data. I would suggest the following as a baseline for any audit of a third party. The effectiveness of the existing compliance programs and codes of conduct, the origin and legitimacy of funds paid to the company, books, records, and accounts, or of any uh, uh, related to the services and equipment provided to the company, all dis- disbursements made for on behalf of the company, and finally, all funds received from the company in connection with the work performed or services to be provided. So tying it all together, in addition to monitoring and oversight of your third parties, you need to periodically review the health of your third party management program. The robustness of your third party management program will go a long way towards preventing, detecting, and remediating any compliance issue before it becomes a full blown FCPA violation. As with all steps laid out in this series, you need to fully document them so that <clears throat> if any regulator, specifically the Department of Justice, or SEC can re- can re- can review your metrics and your compliance program. Leslie Caldwell's remarks around the metrics reviewed in this series may not have been anything new, but she has laid out what the Compliance Council will be reviewing and evaluating. That's the Department of Justice Compliance Council. So you need to understand what is expected from your company's compliance program. You can also use these, use these same metrics that Caldwell has laid out to conduct a self-assessment on the state of your compliance program. So what are today's three key takeaways? Well, it all starts with a relationship manager. You have to have a business unit person who can talk to the third party on a regular basis. You should document these meetings, and you need to have an annual report from your relationship manager. You have to have company oversight through an oversight committee of all third parties. This is uh, for two reasons. 
One is uh, additional risk management strategy or management of risk, uh, the highest risk of third parties. But the other is just simply to have a second set of eyes to make sure nothing uh, incorrectly gets through the system. And finally, audit, monitor, and remediate all third parties on an ongoing basis. This is Tom Fox. Thank you very much for joining me for day nine around the Department of Justice metrics of third party management. And I hope you'll join me tomorrow for day 10. This is Tom Fox. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of One Month to Better Third Party Management. If you've listened to this podcast on iTunes, I would greatly appreciate it if you would rate this podcast as it will help our rankings and help us get the words out on this most unique podcast series in compliance. Also, if you have any questions, please feel free to email me at tfox at tfoxlaw.com. This is Tom Fox. Thank you very much for listening to today, and I hope you will listen tomorrow on another episode of One Month to Better Third Party Management.